and walking now in his own footprints, I do follow through his reasonings, and with pronouncements teach the covenant whereby all things are framed, how under that covenant they must abide nor ever prevail to abrogate the Ian's inexorable decrees how, as we've found, in class of mortal objects, or all else, the mind exists of earth-born frame create and impotent unscathed to abide across the mighty Ian's, and how come in sleep those idle apparitions that so befool intelligence when we do seem to view a man whom life has left. Thus far we've gone, the order of my plan hath brought me now unto the point where I must make report how, Two, the universe consists of mortal body, born in time, and in what modes that congregated stuff established itself as earth and sky, ocean, and stars, and sun, and ball of moon, and then what living creatures rose from out the old telluric places, and what ones were never born at all, and in what mode the human race began to name its things and use the varied speech from man to man, and in what modes hath bosomed in their breasts that awe of gods, which halloweth in all lands fanes, altars, groves, lakes, idols of the gods. Also I shall untangle by what power the steersman nature guides the sun's courses, and the meanderings of the moon, lest we, per case, should fancy that of own free will they circle their perennial courses round, timing their motions for increase of crops and living creatures, or lest we should think they roll along by any plan of gods. For even those men who have learned full well that Godheads lead a long life free of care, if yet meanwhile they wonder by what plan things can go on, and chiefly on how things observed are ahead on the ethereal coasts, again are hurried back unto the fears of old religion and adopt again harsh masters, deemed almighty wretched men, unwitting what can be and what cannot, and by what law to each its scope prescribed, its boundary stone that clings so deep in time. But for the rest, lest we delay thee here longer by empty promises behold, before all else, the seas, the lands, the sky, O Memmius, their threefold nature, lo, their bodies three, three aspects so unlike, three frames so vast, a single day shall give unto annihilation. Then shall crash that massive form and fabric of the world sustained so many eons. Nor do I fail to perceive how strange and marvellous this fact must strike the intellect of man, annihilation of the sky and earth that is to be, and with what oil of words tis mine to prove the same, as happens oft when once yea offer to man's listening ears something before unheard of, but may not subject it to the view of eyes for him nor put it into hand the sight and touch, whereby the opened highways of belief lead most directly into human breast and regions of intelligence. But yet I will speak out. The fact itself, perchance, will force belief in these my words, and thou mayst see, in little time, tremendously with risen commotions of the lands all things quaking to pieces which are far from us may she, the steersman nature, guide, and may reason, O oh, rather than the fact itself, persuade us that all things can be overthrown and sink with awful sounding breakage down. But ere on this I take a step to utter oracles holier and soundlier based than ever the Pythian pronounced for men from out the tripod and the Delphian laurel, I will unfold for thee with learned words many a consolation, lest perchance, still bridled by religion, thou suppose lands, sun, and sky, sea, constellations, moon, must dure forever, as a frame divine and so conclude that it is just that those, after the manner of the giants, should all pay the huge penalties for monstrous crime, who by their reasonings do overshake the ramparts of the universe and wish there to put out the splendid sun of heaven, branding with mortal talk immortal things though these same things are even so far removed from many touch of deity and seem so far unworthy of numbering with the gods, that well they may be thought to furnish rather a goodly instance of the sort of things that lack the living motion, living sense. For short it is quite beside the mark to think that judgment and the nature of the mind in any kind of body can exist just as in ether can't exist a tree, nor clouds in the salt sea, nor in the fields can fishes live nor blood in timber be, nor sap in boulders, fixed and arranged where everything may grow and have its place. Thus nature of mind cannot arise alone without the body, nor have its being far from thews and blood. Yet if it were possible, much rather might this very power of mind be in the head, the shoulders, or the heels, and, born in any part soever, yet in the same man, in the same vessel abide but since within this body even of ours stands fixed and appears arranged sure where soul and mind can each exist and grow, 
deny we must the more that they can endure outside the body in the breathing form in rotting clods of earth, in the sun's fire, in water, or in ether's ski coasts. Therefore these things know it are furnished with sense divine, since never can they be with life force quickened. Likewise, thou canst ne'er believe the sacred seats of gods are here in any regions of this mundane world, indeed, the nature of the gods, so subtle, so far removed from these our senses, scarce is seen even by intelligence of mind. And since they've ever eluded touch and thrust of human hands, they cannot reach to grasp or tangible to us. For what may not itself be touched in turn can never touch. Wherefore, besides, also their seats must be unlike these seats of ours, even subtle too, as meet for subtle essence as I'll prove hereafter unto thee with large discourse. Further, to say that for the sake of men they will to prepare this world's magnificence, and that tis therefore duty and behoof to praise the work of gods as worthy praise, and that tis sacrilege for men to shake ever by any force from out their seats what hath been established by the forethought old to everlasting for races of mankind, and that tis sacrilege to assault by words and overtopple all from base to beam, memius, such notions to concoct and pile, is verily to dote. Our gratefulness, oh what emoluments could it confer upon immortals and upon the blessed that they should take a step to manage aught for sake of us? Or what new factor could, after so long a time, inveigle them the hitherto reposeful to desire to change their former life? For rather he whom old things chafe seems likely to rejoice at new, but one that in forepast time hath chanced upon no ill, through goodly years. Oh what could ever enkindle in such an one passion for strange experiment? Or what the evil for us, if we had ne'er been born, as though, forsooth, in darkling realms and woe our life were lying till should dawn at last the day spring of creation? Whosoever hath been begotten wills perforce to stay in life, so long as fond delight detains, but whoso ne'er hath tasted love of life, and ne'er was in the count of living things, what hurts it him that he was never born? Whence? Further, first was planted in the gods the archetype for gendering the world and the fore-notion of what man is like, so that they knew and preconceived with mind just what they wished to make. Or how were known ever the energies of primal germs, and what those germs, by interchange of place, could thus produce, if nature's self had not given example for creating all. For in such wise primordials of things, many in many modes, astir by blows from immemorialians, in motion too by their own weights, have evermore been wont to be so borne along and in all modes to meet together and to try all sorts which, by combining one with other, they are powerful to create, that thus it is no marvel now, if they have also fallen into arrangements such, and if they've passed into vibrations such, as those whereby this sum of things is carried on today by fixed renewal. But knew I never what the seeds primordial were, yet would I dare this to affirm, even from deep judgments based upon the ways and conduct of the skies this to maintain by many a fact besides that in no wise the nature of all things for us was fashioned by a power divine so great the faults it stands encumbered with. First, mark all regions which are overarched by the prodigious reaches of the sky, one yawning part thereof the mountain chains and forests of the beasts do have and hold, and cliffs, and desert fens, and wastes of sea, which sunder afar the beaches of the lands, possess it merely, and, again, thereof well nigh two-thirds intolerable heat and a perpetual fall of frost doth rob from mortal kind. And what is left to till, even that the force of nature would o'errun with brambles, did not human force oppose, long won't for livelihood to groan and sweat over the two-pronged mattock and to cleave the soil in twain by pressing on the plough. Unless, by the ploughshare turning the fruitful clods and kneading the mould, we quicken into birth, the crops spontaneously could not come up into the free bright air. Even then sometimes, when things acquired by the same turnest toil are now in leaf, are now in blossom all, either the ski -e sun with baneful heats parches, or sudden rains or chilling rime destroys, or flaws of winds with furious whirl torment and twist. Beside these matters, why doth nature feed and foster on land and see the dreadful breed of savage beasts, the foes of the human clan? Why do the seasons bring distempers with them? Wherefore stalks at large death, so untimely? Then, again, the babe, like to the castaway of the raging surf, 
lies naked on the ground, speechless, in want of every help for life, when nature first hath poured him forth upon the shores of light with birth pangs from within the mother's womb, and with a plaintive wail he fills the place, as well befitting one for whom remains in life a journey through so many ills. But all the flocks and herds and all wild beasts come forth and grow, nor need the little rattles, nor must be treated to the humoring nurse's dear, broken chatter, nor seek they divers clothes to suit the changing skies, nor need, in fine, nor arms, nor lofty ramparts, wherewith all their own to guard because the earth herself and nature, artificer of the world, bring forth aboundingly all things for all.